Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today I've got a fantastic Yamaha Super Tenere 1200. I've got this bike for most of today because uh, I'm having a big service done on my uh, Yamaha MT10. I've been chain and sprockets done, uh, different heated grips and uh, uh, and service so uh, uh, Arnold's at Burton on Trent the Yamaha dealer have been kind enough to let me have a have a play on this for a for a while and uh, I'm uh, very thankful uh, they're, they're really good guys there actually really good guys and uh, I have been interested in having a go on this I know it's been around for for ages now and it's kind of gone under the radar a little bit uh, and maybe uh, it's overshadowed a bit by the uh, uh, the BMW GS which uh, you know you see on every street corner I mean they really have sold boatloads of the GS's so uh, but these I like I like the look of it maybe maybe it's a little bit old hat uh, compared to uh, the modern models now but uh, there's a lot to love about this uh, this bike I mean I have been riding it all morning now and uh, it's given me a feel for the bike I mean the obvious things to point out are it is shaft drive and uh, I've never owned a shaft drive bike always been chains and certainly on uh, on long tours chain maintenance can be a bit of a pain always got to have your can and then every night you got to spin the back wheel around and get some oil on the chain whereas really you can forget about it with that i didn't know whether i'd notice the difference but honestly i don't notice that it's a shaft drive and uh, that's a compliment to that shaft drive to be honest Obviously this bike is a major change from my normal ride, an MT-10. I mean you've got uh, 160 horsepower there, whereas we're, with this bike we're down to about, I think it's somewhere around 108, 110. I mean I've not studied the spec sheet on this, but uh, it's, it's still classed as a cross-plane engine. It's a twin, obviously, and uh, another little job of the... Uh, the exhaust pipe still looking very clean because I think this bike has virtually no mileage on it when I when I picked it up so it's effectively a brand new bike uh, this model as well has got uh, the electronic adjustable suspension there and you'll see the uh, tabs at the tops of the yokes there and that is adjusted by, let me show you, turn the suspension on. I mean the dash is, uh, is a little bit uh, old hat compared to the, certainly to the uh, fantastic colour display that's on the latest GS. And uh, uh, the main menu is operated by, I see, I don't know if you can see there, it says menu button. You press that in and uh, it's on standard suspension at the moment you toggle through the switch there hard I don't want hard I like the standard suspension and within that within that setup there you can uh, uh, you can adjust the springs and uh, um, it's it's a good system uh, but I for me being a, a one-up rider I really don't think I'll use it. I really think it would be wasted on me. I mean, I uh, I ride on my own. Don't take a pillion. And these bikes really are designed around pillion comfort and taking luggage. So, if I was buying one personally, I'd go for the basic suspension. And uh, the salesman assures me that they are available. I've not uh, I've not checked the brace so the other uh, main thing to notice about this bike is built for doing miles well, this horrible sort of matty coloured tank looks like it's in grey primary doesn't it 
really really not into the colour but it's 23 litres so you're going to go a good distance before you're going to need to uh, stop for fuel which is the other bugbear with my uh, current machine I definitely have to pull up every 100 miles but there's a certain I mean can you sit there for 280 miles or whatever the range you get out of that you know all day riding without stopping and I think 100 miles is a reasonable point in which to to pull up get off stretch your legs so it just takes some ranging anxiety out of it doesn't it when you've got plenty in there and you're not all the while hunting for, your f for a fuel station it's got the downward swept exhaust pipe there and uh, it's hidden away behind a relatively easily breakable plastic panel so uh, my guess is if you were taking this off-road you'd want some protection around uh, all these plastics at the side there it does look a, a little bit fragile if you were to uh, if you were to drop it and uh, the same goes for down the bottom there there's a like a plastic guard around the oil filter I'm presuming there's uh, there's plenty of aftermarket options to, uh, to toughen up the protection down there so I would imagine you could get stones and and all sorts flicked with that uh, that oil filter so just minor things but uh, I suppose once you start adding lots of crash bars and protection you're adding to the uh, the already considerable weight which is I think something like 260 kilos so um, she ain't no lightweight although in the time I've ridden her she carries a weight really quite well so um, I mean she's, she's quite easy to maneuver and I'll just I'll just show you on the driveway here I mean it's got a really good steering lock You're not be messing around too much moving it around and it's not intimidatingly heavy although I'm a really big chap so it's going to suit me more I mean I'm six foot three 18 stone big I think the seats currently on its lowest setting I'd probably prefer it higher as I've got you know easy flat foot it and my legs are a bit bent probably I prefer it higher but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna alter it it's not my bike it's uh, it's the demos the other thing I've tried today I've tried the screen in the lower position and the screen adjustment taking that screen up and down is a right faff with these to undo them all the way open and then get those to click back into those circles there it's faff to be honest with you which I'm really not keen on I've seen much better screen operations either one-handed or you know obviously the electrical ones are even better something like on the uh, um, on the on the big tourers I think even the uh, um, the Triumph Explorer does a uh, electrically adjustable screen but I have test rode the Explorer admittedly the 1200 Explorer a few years ago and uh, uh, I, I did think that was a top heavy bike really heavy bike and uh, this for me is a better proposition than the uh, than the Explorer although the Explorer had got a a more powerful engine it really it really went but it just felt almost intimidatingly top heavy and I've also test ridden the uh, the previous uh, generation 1200 GS the water cooled GS it really is a good piece of kit and it is difficult to justify why you would have that 
over the GS and that's probably why there are so many GS's out there the GS engine even the, t the 1200 the, the shift cam 1250 is even quicker so I think it's that that's the main reason why they've not sold these together with the with the price the performance aspect is probably the most disappointing I mean it's a lovely engine don't get me wrong and a few years ago people would be saying you're not happy with 110 horsepower on a an adventure style bike you don't need any more than that and really honestly you don't it's just that all the manufacturers are giving it and this hasn't got it and you know people are fickle and they'll, they'll just look at the numbers whereas you know it is it is a great bike once you're on it and uh, do I like the bike? I, I, I really like the bike um, would I have one over a GS? I, I, I probably would simply because I'm in love with the Yamaha reliability they just they just don't give you any problems and that's certainly been the uh, the uh, uh, the story of my ownership for the last three years and best part of 19,000 miles with my uh, my MT-10 and uh, I've heard stories about how good these are how well they keep going so for me if you're looking for reliability and you know something that's just going to keep functioning that's probably the uh, the joey it's also it's also not too intimidating i know it's a big bike but uh, i think as an all-rounder uh, probably deserves to have sold in bigger numbers anyway we'll go for a ride i'll take it back to the shop now I mean, I was a little bit concerned whether the uh, the 18 inch front wheel would make any difference to the handling because I had a uh, a Tiger 800 uh, XE a few years back. And I got a 21 inch wheel at the front, and uh, and that I I thought that did compromise the handling. I wasn't I wasn't happy with the way it turned in, and. Uh, you know, it's kind of put me off the adventure style bikes, but I've got to be honest, I, I really don't notice the difference in the handling, just having a slightly larger front wheel. And these front wheels, I believe, with the spoke setup look in the inside there, done slightly different to the BMWs, we bring the spokes out to the edge, uh, they've gone into a centre a center ring, haven't they? But uh, yeah, tubeless tyres. Uh, and handled really well on the road. Obviously, they've got the the uh, the off roady type tread pattern. I think they're uh, the Bridgestone Battle Axe, Bridgestone Battle Wing. Get it right. So I'll start her up for you. Just go through the sweep there. It's just in black and white, I'm afraid. I've been riding it with the traction control in one and in T mode, which is just road mode. So you've got the uh, cross plane firing order on this engine, gives it that thrum. It does make quite a nice noise when it's uh, going down the road, but uh, as with most of these uh, uh, modern bikes now, uh, the silence down quite a lot uh, uh, for uh, for emission regs. You have, of course, on on here. This is very familiar to me with the uh, um, cruise control down there. Let's just set it up. Uh, you press that. There's a light comes up there. You press set and then you can take the speed up and down there that cycles through different parts of the menu and that opens up the menu button that side there you've got start and stop over there and uh, your mode switch whether you're going standard or off-road so 
this is the type of road this bike really excels on. You know, where the cows will do it up about a dozen times. You know, it's really potholed and uh, it just it just does it with a plum really. Whereas, you know, you'd be uh, having your teeth out on some bikes. Gives you the gives you the confidence to to lean into the corners. Definitely confident, confidence inspiring. I mean, you're up to uh, uh, 70 miles an hour so quickly, really. I think it's just the uh, you know if you if you wanted to get up to really illegal speed really quickly you'd, you'd, you'd maybe find the limitations of this engine but it, it is difficult to it is difficult to uh, to find a, a problem with the engine I mean it's lovely and smooth it does everything really well it's just it just hasn't got the actual overall grunt of a lot of engines but it's a beautiful thing to ride and I think the trouble is numbers numbers do matter to a lot of buyers you know and they're gonna see that you know that the the old GS what did it make about 120 and the new uh, shift cam makes more than that doesn't it? Was it 130 something like that and uh, it is noticeable when you uh, uh, when you are riding them on the road. Certainly, I'll, like I say, I've ridden the, uh, the the old 1200. And when you're going for a fast overtake on a uh, you know on a on a busy road, that's when it does make the difference. But normal day-to-day -day riding, and uh, certainly going on an adventure, this is this is more than adequate. You can soon be up in fifth as well, or even sixth. I mean, we've got that sixth now. I mean, there's not not an amazing amount to go, but it still picks up quite quickly, even in top. I think the main thing you'd buy this for is doing doing miles in super comfort. I mean, it is such a relaxed position here. It's a quiet position as well. If you're a slightly uh, slightly shorter person than me you'll be down pretty much in a quiet zone behind that uh, screen because I did try the screen lower and it was horrendous for me but it does sound quite good doesn't it I'll just take it up the revs a bit Got a little bit of purple there, but uh, it really depends whether you'd want to change it for something a bit uh, a, br a bit fruitier. I guess uh, there are systems available for it. I mean, just looking around the bike, everything seems quality. I know there are there are plastic items around it, but uh, you know it just gives you the sense that uh, nothing will break easily. Obviously, any bike you drop, you are going to break something, and uh, the taller, the heavier the bike, the greater the risk of. Uh, of dropping it while manoeuvring and uh, that's why I wanted to just show you it is relatively easy to move around on the drive I guess I am a big fellow so uh, oh, somebody on a twonu oh, they are really quick bikes 
probably you wouldn't buy one of those to go around the world on. Whereas I think you would on this. Although, would you now buy the little brother to this? The Tenere 700. It took them long enough to get it out there, haven't they? Ooh. A bit dangerous walking down the road there, mate. So, uh, looks a feisty little beast. Got the engine in out the MT07, I think. I don't know, it's fairly unchanged actually. I mean, obviously, the, the frame's completely different on the uh, Tenera 700, but uh, the engine's supposed to be a peach. Although I've, uh, I've not been near an MT07 because size wise I've always found the bikes a little uh, a little bit too small. Oh, we're in a Rosaliston. I think it's somewhere on the way back to Burton. Yeah, have a look down this way. Sounds sweet, doesn't it? Hope the microphone can pick up the engine. Just a, a thrum, really. To the other thing, I am a real fan of still. This has still got a key that turns the bike on and locks the steering. Wow, what an idea, eh? you think all the manufacturers would do that, wouldn't you? But some of, this, some of them are using this uh, strange system called keyless. And it's an utter nightmare. Just stop it, manufacturers. Stop it. God, I hate keyless. Put me off on buying a bike. It really would. If you're looking for a proper, dependable bike that would take you around the world easily, one that'll keep going, one that is fun to ride but not super exciting. You won't go too far wrong with this bike. Certainly if you don't want to be in the BMW club of the billions of other GS riders. Anyway, before I hand the, uh, the bike back, I'd just like to say a uh, a big thanks to uh, Arnold's Motorcycles in Burton-on-Trent for loaning me the bike uh, while mine was being done. I have looked after it, and I, uh, uh, you know, they're a great dealer. I'd also, you know, uh, like to take the opportunity to thank everybody that's come onto the channel in the uh, in the last year. I've only really been doing serious vids for the last year and a bit. Before that, it was just uh, a dumping ground. My uh, my channel was for just ride videos. So uh, I thank everybody that's come on board. And uh, if this is, is your first time to the channel, I'd like to uh, to welcome you. And uh, if you are interested in what we do here, you'd like to click the subscribe button. And uh, if you hit the bell notification, you'll hear then every time we do post a new video generally in the summer post uh, one video a week just depends what we're doing uh, when we're out on tour most of them are tour vids a few reviews the odd time it'll be a bike review and I know they're the uh, uh, the ones that get big numbers but I don't go out to all the dealers asking for a test ride it's just not what I want to do I'll only test ride a bike when uh, I'm genuinely interested in one. But thanks for coming along and I'll catch you on the next vid. Cheers for now. Bye bye.